Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain two ways to do a distinct count with a pivot table. This is also known as counting unique rows. And this was a great question from Rob, a member of our Elevate Excel training program, which we created a data analysis challenge on. If you haven't seen that video yet, the basics of the challenge are that Rob has some CRM data that looks like this here, and he wants to create a summary report of deal count by stage. Now the problem is that there are multiple rows per deal in the source data. We can see we have the same deal ID here, same sales stage, but there are multiple rows here for the different products within that deal. So we have to find a way to do a distinct count or count the unique rows for each of these deals and then sum them up. So in this video, we're going to look at a solution with a pivot table, and we're actually going to look at two different solutions. The first solution we look at will work on any version of Excel. So we're going to use a helper column for this. And the second solution we will look at will use Power Pivot, and that'll only be available on Excel 2013 or later for Windows. So the reason I'm doing pivot tables first is because this first solution will work on any version of Excel. There was a lot of other great submissions on Power Query and using the new dynamic array functions, which we'll look at in future videos. But I first wanted to cover a solution that would work on any version of Excel. And by the way, thank you if you participated in this and left a comment below the video or blog post. There were a ton of great solutions and I really appreciate your participation. So let's take a look at how to do this with a pivot table. The first thing we're going to do is uh, convert this uh, to a table or format this as an Excel table. So we'll just select any cell inside our data source here, home tab, and then we'll go over format as table, uh, right click here and apply and clear formatting. And then we'll go ahead and hit okay. I do have a separate post that explains why to use a table as a source of a pivot table, and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. Now that we have this as a table, we're going to add a helper column, and that's just a column with a formula. So we're going to call this deal count. I'll type deal count right here. That will automatically extend out our table, and we're going to use a formula here with the count if function. So I'll explain how this works. So first, just going to do the count if function. We'll tab into that. The range is going to be our deal ID column. So we'll just select that entire column. And then for our criteria, we're going to just reference this cell in this row, in the deal ID column. So that at symbol here will give us a reference to just the cell in the formula uh, or in the row that the formula is in. And now if we close the parentheses and hit enter, we're going to get that deal count. And as you can see here, there's the number five repeating uh, for this uh, deal here because there's five rows with that deal count, three down here and so on. And so what we actually want to do is divide this number by one and that's going to give us a fraction. So I'm going to modify the formula. We'll type here one and then uh, divided by and now we'll hit enter and of course that formula will fill down again and now we get this distinct count number or when we use this in a pivot table this will create a distinct count because when we add all of these rows up, that's going to equal one for each deal. So we can see over here, the sum of this is one. If we select these three cells here for the second deal, sum is one, and that'll happen all the way down. So now that we have this, we'll go ahead and insert our pivot table, go to the insert tab, choose pivot table. We'll just put this on a new worksheet for now. And we're going to build out our summary report. So the first thing we'll do is take our uh, sta sales stage field and put it in the rows area. That's going to give us a list of those unique values in the sales stage column. Then we're going to take our deal count field and put that in the values area. And that's going to give us a count of the number of deals in each sales stage. And again, it's just adding up all those fractions to give us one for each deal, even though we have multiple rows for each deal. So this is essentially giving us that distinct count in the pivot table. And the nice part about the pivot table is, is as we add more data to our source data, and I provided a tab here with new data, I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this. I'll hit Control C to copy that. Go over to our data sheet and hit Control down arrow to go to the bottom. We'll paste our data right here. The new data is going to automatically extend the table, and we'll also see that the formula is automatically copied down as well. 
So now if we go back over to our pivot table, all we need to do here is right click refresh, keyboard shortcut Alt F5, and that's going to refresh our pivot table. We have a new uh, sales stage type here for proposal. That's automatically included as well, as, as well as the unique deal count here. So this is a great way to do it with pivot tables because again, it's going to work on any version of Excel. Next, we'll take a look at how to solve this with Power Pivot, and then I'll explain some of the pros and cons of each of these solutions. So now we'll take a look at how to solve this with Power Pivot and the distinct count function. And again, you'll need to be on Excel 2013 or later for Windows to use this solution, but there are some advantages here, which I'll explain. So in our example here, I've just made a duplicate copy of our data sheet. And as you can see here, I deleted that additional helper column. We do not need that for this solution. So we'll just select any cell inside our table here. We'll go to the Insert tab and choose Pivot Table. And within the Create Pivot Table window, we're going to check this checkbox here that says Add this data to the data model. And again, you'll only see this if you're on Excel 2013 or later for Windows. So check that box there. That's going to add our data to the data model or Power Pivot. Kind of those two terms are used interchangeably. And you'll see we get the really the same pivot table layout here and everything. And we're going to create the same basic report. So we're first going to take sales stage, drag that into the rows area. So we get our list of unique stages here. And then we're going to take the deal ID field and drag that into the values area. And this is initially going to give us a sum of deal ID because those deal IDs are numbers. Obviously we don't want this. So we're going to right click here choose value field settings that'll open the value field settings window and at the bottom here we have the new distinct count calculation type so we'll select that and hit ok and that is going to give us the correct result so a very simple way to solve this problem the distinct count function will actually go through that column the deal id column and give us a count of the distinct values or the unique values in that field. And so that's exactly what we get here, the correct results without having to add any calculation columns to the source data. So, and, it, and this also works the same if you add new data to the source data and refresh it, of course, it'll refresh the pivot table and show those new results. So no difference there. The advantage to this solution is that we're actually somewhat limited with the other solution with that calculation type. And I'll show what I mean by that. So if we go back to the other pivot table, and again, this pivot table is based on that source data that has the additional uh, calculation column here with the count if function. If, for example, here we wanted to filter this down, let's say we put the product name field in the filters area, and then we want to filter this down by, let's say, only see uh, those deals for product B. Here we're going to run into some issues. Those fractions that we created in the source data are going to be added up. But as you can see here, these numbers are not going to be relevant at all. Uh, it's going to be very tough to figure out what this means. And what we would actually have to end up doing is going back to our source data and modifying this count if we would turn it into a count ifs function to have multiple criteria and also have to filter by the product name column. And of course, if you're just applying the filter with a slicer or something like that, and you want to have things to be very dynamic, you're going to run into problems uh, with this solution. So it's great if you just want to create that basic report, it'll still work. Uh, otherwise, when we use Power Pivot in the data model and the distinct count function like we have here, that same setup will actually work with the distinct count function. So let's put product name here. We'll look at our products. Let's choose product B again, hit OK. And now you can see that we're still getting results. And that's because the distinct count function is going to count those values in the deal ID column based on the filter context here of the pivot table. So essentially it'll still work. One other thing I should just mention here is that uh, you can also write out the DAX formula and create an explicit measure with distinct count. That'll work as well. I just dragged and dropped here to create this implicit measure. This also works, but you can do this with DAX measures. The advantage there with DAX measures is that they're reusable and you could potentially use that in other 
stacks formulas. We explain more about that in our Elevate Excel training course if you're interested in learning more about power pivot and the difference between implicit and explicit measures. But I hope this has helped you. In the next video, we'll take a look at solutions with Power Query, which is another great way to solve this problem. Of course, if you have any questions about these solutions, please leave a comment right below this video. So as you'll see in this video series, there are a lot of ways to solve a problem in Excel. If you'd like to learn more about these new modern features of Excel, like Power Query, Power Pivot, Power BI, even pivot tables, macros, and VBA, then check out my free webinar going on right now called the Modern Excel Blueprint. During the webinar, I explain what each of these tools does and how you can fit these into your workflows to save you a ton of time with your job, automate processes, and produce results that matter. And of course, also become the Excel hero of your organization. So the webinar is going on right now. It's running at multiple days and times, and you can click the link right below this video. We'll probably have one up here somewhere as well that you can click on and get registered and signed up. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.